So this weekend has been Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend, and many people are drawing comparisons to previous years where I think it's a lot of nostalgia, sure, thrown in, but some of the deals that maybe we remember even from years ago, and it got me wondering, what did Black Friday look like specifically for video games 10, even almost 20 years ago? Well, it turns out there's actually a website that's archived a lot of the different advertisements and like the circulars that went around. And I actually picked out a couple here that I figured we could take a look at that are mostly video game centric. But it was kind of interesting just to see maybe how good or even how bad some of the deals really were. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure that like button and subscribe if you're new. Just kind of a fun nostalgia video here to, to go back to. But the site I'm talking about is actually Black Friday Archive. It's it's pretty upfront with that, right? Just to, it's right there in the title. And what's really cool is, while well, I'm going to look at like GameStop stuff because that was GameStop was the place still back then, more so than now. In fact, the two years that I picked out was 2006 and 2009. I'd say those that that's those years right there between 06 and 09 were like the height of GameStop's popularity. The 360, the PS3s, but the Wii, all of that kind of hitting all at once, along with the DS and the PSP. I mean, it was just incredible stuff back then. It was it was a great time to to head to the the stores like a GameStop and just kind of browse around. It was just you couldn't buy stuff digitally. Like you could just buy and download stuff like that. You had to actually go to the store. So there was really nowhere else to go outside, of course, like Toys R Us and stuff. But you get the idea. GameStop was the place. But they do actually have Black Friday ads for everything. <laughs> As like, you can go back in time for if you want Barnes and Noble or I saw Comp USA. Many people don't know what that is. What what is funny is I mentioned Toys R Us. I scroll down here. It's it's here. A lot of kids now have no idea idea what Toys R Us is. Like it's just it's it's one of those things that's been lost to time that many of us who are old enough remember that there were toy stores at one point. That is like a lost art form now, it seems. In the retail space. It's just like go to Amazon and or eBay and just buy your stuff. And that's that seems to be the move now, right? When it comes to toys. Well, as I mentioned, I picked out two years specifically from GameStop. I'll link this uh, Black Friday archive down below in the description. If you yourself want to go relive some of the years past with all the, the Black Friday deals and offerings, but GameStop was right here. And I went all the way back to 2006. That was actually the the oldest one they had, and it's, it's so old that it seemed like the person just decided to take pictures of the circular. We weren't even scanning, which we had scanners back. I like like they had to take pictures. Like I mean, we had scanners, <laughs> so it's not, we weren't. It wasn't that prehistoric at that time. But like right off the bat, this is for 2006. Now to paint the picture, 2006, the Xbox 360 had been out for just about one year exactly here actually, because this is dated November 24th. It was open at 7 a.m. and that was basically a year and two weeks. We could have after the Xbox 360 initially launched in 2005. However, the Wii and the PS3 had just launched a few year, a few weeks prior to this circular going around for Black Friday, and I mean you can see right off the bat, $400 for the the Xbox 360 Pro system. The Pro system is a wireless controller, a 20 gigabyte hard drive, and like the Chrome finish right here on the front where that disk drive is. That was it. It didn't even have a an HDMI port on it. We were still using, like, the AV component uh, ports back then for the Xbox 360. The PS3 did have an HDMI port, and it was, like, the first system I remember really showing up with that, right, enabled. That was it right there. And that was sort of the idea of being a more premium system. But $400. 2006 to now was more than a 50% in terms of inflation. So look at that $400 price and then jump it 50%. And that's technically what this would cost now. So, oh, uh, I know we talk about stuff being expensive currently. Wait till you see some of the game prices for that in that regard. Sure. On disc, by the way. It's not like we're talking about cartridges here. Also, you get a free Razer. V3 Razer with a minimum purchase of $50 for Verizon. You also have to activate it for two years. Just remember the Razer? Just wanted to throw that out there. This is, uh, whew, if we go back in time, this was the move right here. They had a bunch of GameCube games, as you can see, brand new, sealed, $14.99. Chibi Robo is down there. Fire Emblem's down there. Geist. Advanced Wars. Custa, custom custom Robo. I don't think I have to tell you how expensive GameCube games are now. And these were half off basically at $14.99 sealed. Yeah, you go in there and start cleaning up, which we'll, we'll actually be 
getting into this a little bit more because there are a few other flashes of GameCube stuff in here at stupidly cheap prices. Man, what a, what a time that would have been now to just have bought these and thrown them in storage somewhere. Also, Final Fantasy XII had come out like the month prior, by the way, in 2012. And uh, they were going to give you that with a, a $10 GameStop gift card. So there you go. The deals were flying <laughs> at this time. Also, I do like the, you're going to see this as we go through, sort of the, the character of uh, the gamer back then and how they kind of pictured us, which, I mean, they they might have been on and probably were on in, in many cases. But you'll, you'll see as we go through. How is it? There's the Zune at 250 to PC games. Okay. Then we get into the 360. I already mentioned the the um, the Pro system. We also had here like the Core system. That was just a wired controller, no hard drive, at three hundred dollars. Uh, and they were going to offer it looks like some console exclusive thing. It's hard to read that actually. It's that's the thing. They're taking pictures of it with the the camera. So you're seeing the circular there. But then you see the sixty dollar games. So Call of Duty three had come out. Uh, we had SmackDown vs. Raw two thousand seven. Sixty dollar games now again jump at fifty percent. That's what it would cost currently, and that's that was why the argument came up. With the uh, game prices going up to 70 Now, again, there are many other ways these companies are making money outside of just the game itself. Because even around this time, DLC was not widely thought of. Let alone microtransactions or battle passes or all the other f free titles that technically make more money on skins than the initial purchase price. So if it was still like this, I, I, I feel like that, that initial price would be like 90 bucks now. If there were no other alternatives to making money, but clearly there, there are things have been figured out to where, yes, they have been able to do that. But I mean, the $60 games back then, that was when the, the jump happened technically the year prior with that Xbox 360. Then we have PS2 stuff, which I, I immediately saw here, Dragon Ball Z Tenkaichi at 15 bucks. That's, that's a little bit more expensive. This being a brand new sealed copy and PS2 was still very popular at this time in 2006, even though the PS3 had just come out. There was a large library of titles. The system was much more affordable than the $600 PS3, that being $130. And the games like Shaolin Monks and stuff were $10. It's just, there was so, Guitar Hero was massive. It was, uh, there was just so much stuff you could pick from. Grand Tours were four at $10. This, uh, this person says, I don't know if you can stay up for a week straight, but I'm going to try. All right. Well, that's, that's just, again, what they, what they thought here. This one, PS3 is going to look great on my big screen. TV, hint, hint. Okay. And there, well, the PS3, again, 60 bucks for the games, but the the system, even though it was $600, still sold out. Like, I remember it was still difficult to find the thing. It was still being resold and scalped on the open market, which a little harder to do back then, I guess, because eBay wasn't necessarily where it is now, right? Like where you could just go on eBay immediately, take some pictures from your phone and post it before you even get home that you have it in hand and sell it for twice as much, probably before you pull in the driveway on release, but people were still doing it. You had the PSP, $250 for that PSP. Again, jumped that 50%. And it's like, man, that dedicated handheld was not, it's not cheap. Also, if you did, if you bought 50 cent, for the PSP at forty dollars, you get fifty cent for the PS2 or Xbox for free. So just just a just a heads up there. <laughs> they, they're just giving that one away. The used systems were interesting, so that's just mostly about trade credit. Uh, and that, okay, so these are the used games. They do buy two get one free. They've been doing this this promotion like every single year since then. Is it? I mean, this is two thousand six. They just ha had it again here this weekend, and. Uh, Metroid Prime. I know these are used copies, so it's like, okay, hit hit or miss if it was in good shape. If you found one in good shape, though, Metroid Prime on the GameCube for four dollars. Wind Waker at ten bucks. I mean, I I have to imagine this used section looked crazy. Look, there, there's uh, they got Metroid, they got Metroid down here, Mario and Luigi, Super Mario, uh, Super Mario sixty four DS. Ah, man, that was. That was something else right there. Unfortunately, they didn't really show a large selection of the used stuff, but it it was case by case, of course, by store. But you imagine going in and seeing some of this stuff on store shelves, and not only that's buy two, get the third free. So you get Battlefront and Wind Waker. Oh, yeah, Metroid Prime. That's the free one because it's $4. Anyway, they closed out with the Wii, which there is no ad for the Wii other than there's a new Wii Interactive in their store. That that's the ad. That's it. That's the, that's the ad run because they don't have to sell the Wii on in a circular like this. It's uh, it's impossible to get. 
at this time was still impossible to get the next two years all the way up. I I feel like all the way up through, oh, it might've been almost 2009. The Wii was incredibly difficult to find in stores, like holiday after holiday after holiday, impossible. So all they really had to do to get you in the store was you can come try the system out because it's not like you're really finding it anywhere anyway. Otherwise though, yeah, the games for the Wii at the time were 50 bucks each. Then the DS at $130. You can see that comparison to the PSP, much more affordable here. And then the games even being $30 each brand new. Unless it's new Super Mario Brothers or Animal Crossing at $35. So not bad, actually. In fact, going back to 2006, I feel like that's a pretty good overall sale that they have there uh, with what they could do. I mean, they had two system launching and one was only a year old, technically. So it's not like you're expecting massive discounts on those pieces of hardware. But if you're looking for used titles and stuff, especially now we see what those GameCube games were worth. Is pretty good. But then we jump forward here to 2009. Now, fortunately, this one, it looks like they were able to scan this and and, and have a, a higher quality version that's maybe a little easier to read here. But at this time, the PS3 Slim had just released. This is like a month or two before, I believe, here uh, with the PS3 Slim. And this is when things really started to turn around for Sony. Remember... Uh, Technically, 2006, the system came out at $600, and they worked year after year after year to get to this point, where they had it all the way down to $300. So, I mean, technically at this point, the PS3 Slim, with they have a holiday bundle with, you can see little big planets in there, God of War, God of War uh, 2. I mean, that's not a bad bundle, considering just a few years prior, it was a $600 console, and the PS3 Slim was legitimately a good console. I mean, it still is, but uh, just didn't play PS2 games. Plays PS1 and PS3, and then, of course, Blu-ray. It's also more more uh, reliable than the larger PS3 systems. And then next to that is the Xbox 360 Elite Holiday Bundle. Had the HDMI port, the 120-gig hard drive on top, and then you could pick uh, Call of Duty 4 <laughs> or Bakugan. So, tough choice there tough choice to me this might be like the best sale here that they had and it actually was all about their used stuff which makes sense for GameStop that's sort of the stuff that they can discount the most or be the most lenient with when it comes to I mean like things like buy two get one free here but they had DS it was the original pre-owned system not the DS Lite eh, 50 bucks and then the Game Boy Advance SP at $30 now again you see what they're technically worth currently like three in four times that in good shape yeah i'd be going back in time and picking up three or four of those now for that you know the same price even the the psp that's the original pre-owned system i believe the 1000 series at 80 bucks that's pretty good of course you'd want to check the system out to make sure it's not all beat up or anything but if you get one in good shape that's that's solid stuff even the games themselves 20 bucks for Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hourglass, and they, they still have buy two, get one free on the stuff. This, I mean, look, they even have Gran Turismo 3 at $2. I mean, come on. You can't beat that. They even tried to give away Wii Music with <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, look, I know people, I'm sure people out there like Wii Music, but that was uh, kind of a meme from, what, one of the E3s that Nintendo had. So it's kind of like, do I do I need to take Wii Music with me? I, I just kind of want Mario Galaxy. We still have the 360 arcade system that's at $200. The inflation from 2009 to now is like 47% or something. So it's still kind of close to that 50% mark. Again, you can kind of get the idea when you look at these games and the pricing and it's like, okay, we jump it. 50% almost. It doesn't come with a hard drive or anything. I believe the arcade system, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it did. Wireless controllers. That was kind of the, the jump from the core system is while it still did not have a hard drive on it, it did have a wireless controller. And actually, some of these had storage built in. It was like a small, like, uh, I don't know, 512 megabytes maybe on board. And that was mostly enough to do save games since you could play everything off of the, the game itself. You didn't have to install the games, nothing there. It basically put the game in, and it started up right away. It's uh, it's wild stuff, I know. And I know the Switch starts up immediately. This is more for any of the disc-based systems right now where you have to install for what feels like way too long to jump into the game right away. This is pretty funny. We have the, that wireless controller and charger, which... Right now, think about when you buy a controller, it's already expected to have some sort of rechargeable battery inside of it, I guess, unless it's a Xbox Series controller. Now, I'm 
looking at it here, but that's seventy dollars. Uh, again, you move up with inflation, and you start looking at things like the Dual Sense or the PlayStation or the or the Switch Pro controller. They don't seem that expensive anymore, especially when you look at the PSP Go system at two hundred and fifty dollars. Look, the Go, I, I do like that system. It's 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 small. It's something that does. I think travel well, granted, as long as you protect the front screen, since that is always forward facing, but it's even now it's technically cheaper than it is here, just finding it used and stuff. So uh, that was the fact that it didn't come with a disc drive, like a UMD drive or anything. And you were very reliant on just the PlayStation store. Looking back on this price, I understand why people would have probably just gone with the PSP 3000 here, especially the core pack where Yes, the system, but also you can get different games and even a, a movie with it. So there you go. Oh, and even in 2009, the PlayStation 2 system continued to roll along. The PS2 uh, Slim right here. Look, you get that. You could pick up God of War 2, which is an incredible game on that platform at 20 bucks. Got Jack and Daxter representation here in the ad. And you think you think Sony just started this. Look way down here, right? Got to I got to zoom all the way in. Look at this. Does not include stand. Yeah, this been this goes back 15 years, people. I will say the 360 section here when it comes to games kind of disappointing if you look at it. I I know we think back on Black Friday and go, "Oh, remember the 10 or $20 game section?" Not that common here. And this is 2009. Think about how uh, how we are now four years in yeah because it came out in 05 we're four years into that generation and i mean you're seeing sure 40 dollar games and 50 dollar games and again it, it adjusts for inflation and stuff and their big thing here was while we had new titles like modern warfare 2 and assassin's creed 2 uh their big sale was that it's just in stock because you didn't really have anywhere else to go again you weren't going to a digital storefront on your system and buying them there or downloading there wasn't as much competition for them there as opposed to the game just being available so their big push was it's guaranteed in stock although i am curious if you worked at gamestop around this time what was the move if you actually ran out of stock because this seems like something that would be Easy to advertise, but difficult to deliver on if there was a ton of traffic to any one store. I assume it was, hey, if you buy this from us, we will make sure we have it here eventually. So if you order it here, we'll bring it in and like you'll be pick it up a few days from now. Hey, check it out. We have the Wii system here at $200. So we did at least have a price cut from years prior where it was $250. They had like the balance board Wii Fit, which was very popular. It was at $100, and they had the new Super Mario Bros. Wii at 50 bucks. Not a ton of sales, technically, as I think this was just a full price drop from Nintendo, if I'm not mistaken. Here we go. The DS Lite, $60 each. These are these are used ones. Or the PS2, $40. It looks like they have the Slim at 50 This would have been the move right here. I mean, you get a, you get a PS2, and you could get a DS Lite, 100 bucks like out the door that's that probably would have been the move there i mean like the ps2 just that library of games the ds Lite with the library of games it's it's hard to really run out of stuff to play at that point oh yeah i forgot we also had the dsi that was 170 dollars. wow i mean i i remember the dsi came out and i thought it was cool because it it felt much more robust than the ds at that time there's just a lot more you could do built into the system you didn't need the cartridge to use a web browser it's just it, it had cameras on it but i i kind of just stuck with my ds Lite eventually until the 3ds came out but i think i think evan actually had the dsi and he actually used it quite a bit for things outside of games with the web browser and stuff this was the big turnaround here for the the ps3 again the slim model sure but man when uncharted 2 came out that was such a it was a generational leap inside the generation going from uncharted 1 to uncharted 2 was like mind-blowing stuff and this is when we started seeing sony i believe run those ads with kevin butler and it was kind of just like fun sony at that time whereas years prior it was kind of just like confident you're gonna buy it no matter what we do here sony so they got that worked out they started to have a nice cadence of releases that really showed off what the ps3 could do and their pricing just got a lot better i think pretty much across the board even their dual shock threes which we can see here at 55 dollars each i mean that's that was a much better controller than what they launched the ps3 with with that 
really annoying six axis. But that was Black Friday 2009. I think 2006 was a bit better, but also because we had crossover from the Xbox, the GameCube, and, and the PS2, like, fully. So there was just a lot of stuff you could pick from in the store at that time. I, I'm sure the 360 library looked way better in 2009 compared to 2006, but... It was, uh, it was a really exciting time in 2006. Same with 2009, but there was just a lot of stuff hitting then, and we had new hardware on the scene, and it was just a lot of fun. But even looking back on this now, I still think we... What happens with Black Friday is I feel like many of us remember, like, the best year we can think of for Black Friday, and then we start to compare it to, like, the current one, where maybe the deals aren't as good as that one, but they're better than some of these other, like, previous Black Friday. So it is, it is kind of hit or miss depending on what's happening at that time in the industry especially if we have brand new hardware or hardware that's aged for quite a while along with the games and they can mark things down a bit more so it's it's kind of all over the place in that regard but actually this year i i think looking around was was pretty good especially yes when you start bringing inflation into the mix it's not really a contest at that point However, there were plenty of really good $20 games this year, brand new, and some that I even picked up, say, for PlayStation 5, Xbox, and the Switch. But let me know what you guys think about this down below, and hey, feel free to go through some of these uh, these Black Friday archive ads and stuff. Let me know if you find anything really interesting, because maybe I'll go over it in a video at some point. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.